Welcome back to Play Sci Studios, everyone, and to another edition of Shit You Need. On today's episode, we're going to be focusing on some comfort and convenience items that relate to guitar playing, a couple of which are just accessories, one of which is a actual hardware item, which if you are a keen viewer and watched the last episode of this show, you might notice it right off the bat because it is on this guitar and has helped tremendously the past few days. Um, so all these things are fairly new that I've gotten and tried out and I thought they were cool enough, or at least had their uh, usefulness that I would showcase them here and uh, tell you all about it. I want to start off with the newest addition though, and that is the tailpiece on this Gibson SG. Like most standard Gibson guitars, this SG came stock with a tunematic bridge and tailpiece setup. But for those of you that are familiar with that bridge, you probably remember that most tailpieces look like this and all they really are are just a standard anchor for your strings. They don't do a whole lot else. This, however, this specialized tailpiece actually has fine tuning and I know the color scheme is off. This is chrome. For whatever reason, the SGJs from 2014 shipped with like matte nickel hardware, which looks cool, but I, I've got to rectify that situation. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, but this was a very experimental bridge system for me because I wanted to try this out in case I wanted to apply it on other guitars going forward, specifically extended range stuff. But um, I think I will because I have really, really liked this tailpiece system. And you won't see it very often, which kind of surprises me because it works so well. They do come stock on BB King's Lucille signature guitar, but on any other Gibson, to my knowledge, you basically have to buy them aftermarket, which is crazy for two reasons to me. Um, first of all, this thing looks freaking awesome, in my opinion, at least. Um, I don't know how I would like it on something like a classic gold top Les Paul, but the pictures I have seen of this thing on other guitar models, I quite like it. Um, number two is that it works phenomenally. I play this SG in standard, C standard that is, and um, with not too thick of strings, I'm only rocking like a 52 as the thickest gauge. Um, on a 24.75 inch scale with a very, you know, high angle headstock there, uh, synthetic bone nut that does like to slip a little bit unless you put some grease on it. It's not the easiest tuning to maintain and I'm not taking this anywhere. I'm not, you know, it's not on the road. It's not getting beaten, banged up. It's just going from a guitar stand to here and that's it. Even then, it is a bit of a challenge. Obviously, these tuning machines aren't the highest quality, but that's not the issue really. Um, but being able to just, you know, knock it back a couple of cents when it does get out of tune, if I'm recording something, it is, an absolute boon. I have loved this system and that's without even locking the strings on the other side of the nut here, which you can absolutely do. Um, or if you were building a guitar from scratch, you could have the nut be a locking nut like on a Floyd Rose, on a Kaler, whatever. But um, I am planning to install just that, a um, after the nut here, string lock to preserve the tone of the nut and all that good stuff. But that'll come at a later date. For now, if you have a regular tunematic bridge system, I highly recommend that you at least look into this because it has made my life so much easier on this guitar. And in this instance, this bridge has enough range to go from C standard to drop B flat, which is really nice because I could just like one, two, three, couple of little mini turns there and I'm, I'm dead on it without having to go past a node and then come back up. So it's a convenience feature for sure, but I think this makes the functionality of the guitar um, tenfold better, at least for my use case. And if you, again, have anything that has a standard tunematic bridge, I would highly recommend at least giving one of these a test drive to see if it fits for you. Me personally, I like it so much that I want to reapply it on about every other tunematic guitar that I will that I do have currently and that I will acquire in the future because this thing rocks. Um, the one downside of these is that brand new, they're like 160 bucks. You can buy a pretty good tunematic bridge all together for that, like a really nice one. So the tailpiece being that much brand new does kind of suck. I did get this one used for about half off, um, but keep your eyes open. Maybe you'll get lucky as well. Overall, it's been a great upgrade for me personally, and I would recommend it to anyone that wants a little bit more functionality of an otherwise low profile piece of steel on the end of their guitar. This tailpiece might seem like a bit of an investment, especially if you have a lot of guitars with tunematic tailpieces, but perhaps the next item will actually gain you a little bit of savings and it'll pay it off in the long run. So I'm talking about Dunlop Tortex Triangle Picks and really don't even care about this brand or the model of pick in particular. What I've re-fell in love with is actually the triangle shape for a couple of reasons. I think I want to step back down to like a 0.83 or 0.7 for normal six string stuff. But what I love about these is that 
you have two extra sides on a pick. So you wear one out, you can just flip to the other one. And that may seem like such a stupid, like, well, no shit thing. Um, but in practice, I go through guitar picks a lot more quickly than I used to. Even in like the past two years, I feel like I'm wearing out standard guitar picks in no time. My favorite pick for eight string stuff is this prime tone sculpted Dunlop pick. And it has a great growl on an eight string, um, a lot of rigidity, but unfortunately I wear through one in about like five to six weeks. And these things cost over a buck a piece. Kind of hard to justify that um, in my opinion. What I really like about these is that I get about the same rigidity, but you get three times the usefulness, if not more, because these wear at a bit more reasonable pace. And when they do wear out, you still get a usable tone. Whereas that thing just kind of grabs the string and sounds absolutely terrible. Um, so like I said, it's not exactly sharp enough nor thin enough for what I want it to do for six string stuff. But I think I'm going to kind of go through my pick inventory, sort through the ones I like and dump the ones I don't and replace everything with triangle picks because it's like, again, one of those obvious things that you kind of forget about after you're so used to sticking to a couple pick brands, which I'm bad about. Um, there's a couple I've liked and I never really ventured too far outside of that. But um, what actually prompted me for doing this was seeing Devin Townsend live. And um, I caught one pick and I bought his box set. And of course he gets some custom triangle picks with his logo on them. And watching interviews, he was like, yeah, I use triangle picks because once you wear out one side, you can use another. Like, why am I not doing that? <laughs> so I did. And um, I think it's pretty economical. Is it gonna save you a lot of money in the long run? Not really. Um, though I do think the added surface area and, and some of the other design qualities might get you a different sound, maybe not a better sound, but maybe one um, that you're, you've been looking for. And it's worth a try. I mean, you can buy a pack for like four bucks if you don't like it, big deal. But um, yeah, triangle picks, it's like not just for bass guitars, crazy. The last item of today is this Click Air Cell guitar strap. And I'm pretty picky about guitar straps. I prefer them a little bit thinner than probably a lot of people do at least width wise, um, but they really do not cooperate with heavier guitars. Could never do it on either of my eight strings. And even though this is kind of one of the lighter guitars in my rig, it's still kind of heavy for an SG. I guess it's because of the maple neck and um, just the different construction compared to most traditional SGs, but um, it can wear on you after a while. And um, thick leather straps just don't do it for me. I'm more of a minimalist. I don't want some like crazy leather work or flames in the stitching or something that is, you know, half the cost of a guitar. If it gets damaged, I'll be more pissed off about it than I would actual damage to the instrument. Um, I kind of wanted to be low profile and, and let this be the uh, center of attention. So when I came across this, I was all eyes. I guess not really all ears, it doesn't make a sound. So what's cool about this is the underside. So as the name implied, this is filled with air, I guess. I mean, I don't know how they're not gonna be popped eventually, but it does feel spongy. Um, it's not memory foam because they do, you know, you can feel resistance. It feels like pushing in a bubble but um, it does feel so nice even on the on heavier instruments. I feel most guitar straps distribute 80% of the weight like right here on top of your shoulder and it wears me out after you know 90 minutes I'm just I'm done <laughs> whatever I'm playing um, unless it's the acoustic guitar I've got to put the thing down and I'm probably going to be you know a little sore the next day. With this though I feel like all the weight doesn't just sit here it kind of, you know, it's like an even pressure distribution um, the way that you would want it to be. It still feels like you're holding something, you can tell um, in this t-shirt material, it's slipping a bit more than it normally would, um, but it does hold, hold up well normally. And it just, it feels like it is riding on air because it is, but um, it doesn't have that like pinpoint, there's a screwdriver going to your shoulder type of pressure. It, it does feel really nice. So um, the other guitar straps I've tried of this kind, you know, these big fluffy monstrosities uh, that look like, a, you know, like a NASCAR seatbelt or something. Those never did it for me, but this is thin enough. It, it looks nice enough, but it's extremely comfortable. And uh, I'm gonna buy a couple more of these. This one works really well for here. I'd like one that's a bit shorter for my eight string so I could, you know, get up to the upper frets a little more easily. But um, this thing is super cheap on Amazon. It's under 20 bucks, whatever it was. I've had it for a few months at this point. Um, I could say it's been 
an absolute boon. If you're a gigging guitarist or jam a lot with your band, you definitely want to invest well into some good guitar straps. It will help your back and shoulders later on, even though you're probably going to have a little bit of trouble with them anyway. Um, but for people like me who are resigned to sitting and playing a lot of the times, the few times that you are standing and playing, this will definitely make the experience a lot more enjoyable. Um, super inexpensive, under 20 bucks on Amazon, and I'm sure you can find similar stuff anywhere else, but this particular Click Air Cell, I can personally recommend. Um, I think if you combine it with some decent strap locks and a couple other nice upgrades, it will do you well on about any instrument you have that has strings on it. So that'll do it for this short and sweet episode of Shit You Need. If you have any other suggestions for stuff you'd like to see or recommendations of your own, please do leave them below. And uh, otherwise, we will see you next time. I have a few more toys that I think are worth investing in. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.